Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and to this time-lapsed version of a Springer Spaniel in long grass. I hope that you enjoy this speedy version here. If you do then please do subscribe to me here on YouTube. I also have lots of real-time tutorials and lots of other informational tutorials all about soft pastel and if you'd like to learn even more then check me out on Patreon where you can gain access to my full catalogue of real-time tutorials and lots more. My client asked me to create a portrait that represented this dog who it's a working dog, it's a Springer Spaniel. And what does a Springer Spaniel love most? Well, for most of them, that's being outdoors and working, they're a working dog. So after looking through their photo reference selection, I chose this one, which is actually a crop from within a much larger photograph. And I thought that this one really represented what they described as their dog. So I took on the challenge of creating an extremely grassy background. Something that I like to avoid quite often as it's very laborious. And if you're struggling to paint grass, I actually have some tutorials here on my YouTube channel. I released a video very recently all about painting different types of grass as I've painted so many different types of grass in my career as a pet portrait artist. Sometimes a bit more impressionistic, sometimes grass that's far away, and then sometimes like in this piece, I had to go into a bit more detail, especially in the foreground. So I decided to save most of the detailed grass for right down in the foreground and allow some of the grass behind the dog to sit a bit further away, so slightly blurry. This piece genuinely had me a bit confused for a few days as I don't think I've painted this exact type of grass before. Grass where it's really long, it's a bit wet looking, it looks like it's been trampled, so it's going in all sorts of different directions. And we're seeing it from slightly from above, just like our view of the dog here. So it's a bit of a mess actually when you look at it. So I was concerned that it was going to distract too much from the dog. And it was my main priority to try and make the background a nice uh, lush green pattern, but also not to distract from all the nice detail in the dog. So once I got the top part to a certain degree of finished, I started working on the dog. It always helps me to get the main subject in as early as possible so that I can start to envision how it's going to look at the end. So it's really helpful to get a little face in there staring back at me. And I love the liver and white colour of a Springer Spaniel. There's nothing more rich than those lovely deep browns with a hint of red in it. So the warm colours from the browns really being set off by all of the beautiful lush greens in the background. I knew it could work, but it just wasn't easy getting there. So that's something that I will talk about a lot in the real-time tutorials that I make from this piece. Because if this is too speedy for your liking, if this makes you a bit dizzy to watch it, you will be able to watch much of this in real time over on my Patreon channel, where I will release in-depth narrated and colour-coded tutorials, giving you some guidance, probably on wet fur. I think that's going to come from this tutorial as you're gonna see later on in the portrait that even the fur is quite wet and dirty. The dog certainly isn't looking pristine and that was all part of the effect of creating a portrait that represents a working dog. So this is certainly not a dog that likes to sit on the sofa all day long. And I loved that about this photo reference. It really showed the dog in his element. So there will certainly be some tutorials on how to create the curls, how to create the wet, muddy look in the fur, as well as possibly some tutorials on the long grass, especially in the foreground area. If I can bring myself to relive the whole experience and edit together some videos. So it may have been the start of a new year, 
uh, struggling to get the motivation going fully again. I think everyone's been feeling a bit that way. So this portrait, I definitely had to really focus and battle through a lot of days. And I don't mind that because when I get to the end of one like this, I can both breathe a sigh of relief and I also have this portrait in my memory bank now for the next time that I'm struggling. Because often you really have to call on your, your mental powers to get through a painting. It's certainly not that I didn't enjoy much of this painting. I really did. There were days that I sat down to work and it felt easy. But you don't always feel like that when you're painting and it's almost a good thing to learn that the struggle is worth it in the end. And you learn a lot about yourself and how much um, patience and how much perseverance you have. So sometimes painting is a struggle. It's not easy all the time. And I've been sharing the journey of this painting with my patrons over on Patreon. And I think it's useful for them to see me struggle sometimes as well, because often my tutorials make it seem like it's always easy for me and that I can paint at the speed of light, like the time lapses make it seem. But of course that's not true and I like to share when I'm having trouble with a piece as well as sharing my successes because I think those times are just as useful for other artists to learn from as the times when I'm finding something really easy and I can show you clearly what I'm doing. So I try to share as many of the struggles as I do the things that I find easy to do. And I think that that's the case even when an artist has been doing something for many, many years, you still get days where something just seems really difficult. Or you get a challenge like this that puts you out of your comfort zone. So I try to teach as much about that on my Patreon channel too. It's not just all about physical technique and uh, choosing colours and all of the things that go into being an artist. Some days it's as much about the mental battle as anything else. So working on the dog was a real joy. That beautiful brown liver colour and all of the glowing white because in this lighting surrounded by so much lush green that lovely white fur really pops out. And I knew that once I got the rest of the dog done that I could then tackle the foreground grass with a bit more confidence. So using a mixture of my lovely unison sticks and you also see me pick up lots of pastel pencil in this one just to create some extra detail. I also made use of a beautiful dark Terry Ludwig colour which is a dark eggplant colour and that really helped create that liver brown effect. I've also put it down on the base around the dog here. You can see that I've pretty much blocked in where the grass is going to be. And that lovely dark rich earthy colour is going to shine through all of the little blades of grass hopefully. And that's the wonderful thing about the soft pastel sticks. If you're using a nice quality of pastel, you'll find that your vibrant or lighter colours will go on top of the dark colours, no problem. So it's great to get that dark contrast in there first, especially on grass like this where it's quite patchy and you can see through the grass to the earth underneath. So this is the part of the dog where I really had to create a different type of fur to what I'm used to. You can see that there's mud on the dog, that it looks quite wet from being in the long grass. And that was quite a different technique to creating normal dry fur. It's a really different technique. So I think I will be making some tutorials from this piece to show that because it's certainly not the first time I've had to paint a wet dog. And if you're getting into pet portraits, I guarantee that it's something you will encounter as well. It's also pretty hard to avoid painting grass as a pet portrait artist. I've had to do it so many times. And as I said, there are many different ways to capture grass. 
You can go into lots of detail where you've got to spend time on each individual blade of grass. It's possible, but it's extremely laborious. And then of course there are other methods where you can be a bit more loose or impressionistic. I like to make use of all the methods, but I judge it painting to painting which one I think is going to be appropriate. And with this one, I really wanted to try and create the tangled mess that is the bottom of the painting. So many beautiful lush greens, a colour I'm so familiar with coming from Ireland. And if you get to paint any kind of landscape from Ireland, you'll notice just how many greens you need in your palette. So now that I've got pretty much all of the dog except the legs done, I start to work the grass around those areas. Anywhere where the grass should be behind the dog, I try and work that now and then I'll add the legs in a little bit later. But it just took me a long time studying the photo reference, trying to simplify it as best I could. And surprisingly, to make something look random and messy, you really have to slow down. It's not a case of just going at it really quickly and it'll look random. Sometimes the quicker you work, the more uniform or the more orderly it looks. So I really have to slow down in these areas and really consider my marks to try and capture that random mess. So now I've got some of the grass around the legs, I can get the legs done. And at this point it starts to feel good because I know I'm on the home stretch. Even though I've got a lot of grass left to do, it's so much nicer to come to work when you've got this much already done. So the final touches going on the legs before I can really start to work the foreground grass. Bringing in lots of my lush unison greens and also creating one or two little dead leaves just for an extra bit of detail in the foreground. Not trying to get it exactly like the photo reference, still trying to simplify what I can see, but hopefully creating a similar effect. So yeah, I really began to enjoy the grass as I got to this stage. So it proves to me that it's mostly mental and that you can battle through. I hope that you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about my battle with this painting. And I hope that you will subscribe to me here on YouTube and show my channel some support. And as I said, if you'd like to learn even more about Soft Pastel, do check out my Patreon channel. I've got my full library available for you to browse on my website, emmacolbertart.com. But thanks very much for watching this, and until next time, happy pastling.